I haven't done one of these for a while, so I think it's about time we did another Brothers Grimm illustration tying to one of the stories in here. And the next story is the story of the youth who went forth to learn about fear. Now, this is a quite a long story, so what I did was I really uh, narrowed it down, really cut this story down in my own notes, so. Yeah, it's, it's a huge, huge story. There's a couple of illustrations in this section too, like you've got this one and you have this one. So what I decided to do with this, uh, with, with this story today is the illustration that I wanted to do is relating to this one. As I draw this for you, I will fill you in on what this crazy ass story is all about and also just a little side note too um i was i was always under the impression that the brothers grimm wrote all these fairy tales but actually the brothers grimm went around and collected these stories from townspeople that uh, had written them so it wasn't their stories it was just a collection of stories that they that they collected and you probably already knew that but i didn't so <laughs> I was actually informed by one of you lovely subbers that uh, told me about that so yeah I get so educated with my YouTube channel anyway without further ado let's get into this illustration and do my own version of this page right here before I get into the story of this Brothers Grimm story, I just wanted to let you know about the complete struggle that I had with this dude's right arm in the background. <laughs> you will see me rub this picture out about, oh, I don't know how many times, but I could not get that arm right. It was just insane. And I ended up getting my, uh, my posable doll and I still couldn't get it right. <laughs> but in the end, I kind of just sort of stepped back and thought about it. And I, yeah, I ended up uh, finally getting there and finally sort of realizing how to do that arm. But while I tell you this story, enjoy me rubbing this piece out eh, about a million times so anyway the story of the youth who went forth to learn about fear there was a father and he had two sons he had an older one who was smart and the younger one was stupid so this story is about the younger stupid son <laughs> when people would sit around and tell scary stories and they would shudder this young boy did not know how to shudder but he wanted to know how to shudder. He did not know how this felt. So he went to his father and told him that he wanted to know what it was like to shudder. One day a sexton came to see his father and his father told the sexton that his backward son wanted to learn how to shudder. The sexton took the boy and promised his father that he would teach him. First thing he did for this young boy was told him to climb up to the bell tower at midnight and ring the bell. The sexton thought he would disguise himself as a ghost. He waited for the boy at midnight and when the boy came to ring that bell, the boy warned him three times to back off before pushing him down the stairs. Once he pushed the sexton down the stairs, he went back to bed. The sexton's wife came to the boy in the morning and said, my husband did not come home. The boy said he didn't see the sexton, but then he said he did see a figure though in the tower and he pushed that figure down the stairs. The wife ran to the bell tower and found her husband was laying on the ground with a broken leg. The wife told the backwards boy's father. The father told them to take him away as he was evil. The father was so disappointed, even though his son tried to explain that he did not know it was the sexton. The father kicked him out and never to return again. So the boy went to find a new home. On his journey, he met a man that had seven men hanging from the gallows. Man overheard the boy muttering about how he wanted to learn how to shudder. The man said, come at midnight 
Sit beneath the dead men and you will shudder. He did just that and at midnight the wind blew and made him cold. He felt sorry for the dead men so he pulled each one down and put them by the fire. He got angry though with the seven men as they did not talk and their clothes ended up catching fire by the, by the fireside. So he put them back up onto the gallows. <laughs> The man returned the next day and asked if he shuddered, which the boy replied no. So he was on his way down the road. He soon met a wagoner that overheard him muttering about how he wanted to shudder. So the wagoner took him on board and promised that he would teach him how to shudder. And he took him to an old haunted castle to watch this castle for three nights. There is gold, treasure, and king's daughters he could have if he could get past the evil spirits. No man had done it before. The boy accepted it, and the king gave him three things he could take with him that wasn't alive. He requested fire, a cutting board, and a knife. The boy sat in the castle with his fire on the first night, and two black cats came out to greet him. They wanted to play cards, but all the boy wanted to do was cut their long, sharp nails. The boy then killed them and went back to his fire. Then out of the darkness, all of these black dogs and black cats came out with red hot chains and the boy killed some and some ran away. He then grew tired and found a bed. But the bed moved and started gallivanting all over the castle and the boy yelled, go faster, go faster. And the bed flipped over and the boy got up and went back to the fire and slept until morning. The king was surprised to see him alive and the boy couldn't wait to do the two remaining nights left. The second night, the boy encountered half a man that climbed down from the chimney. He was frightful. More men followed with dead man's legs and two skulls to play bowling with. The boy asked to play and they played with him. Then all of a sudden, they all disappeared and the boy went to sleep. The king asked the boy the next morning if he had learnt how to shudder yet and the boy replied no. And then the final third night, six tall men came in carrying a coffin with a dead man inside. The boy opened the lid and tried to warm the dead man with the fire. This did not work, so he laid him in bed and he then cuddled the dead man and the dead man warmed up and came to life. But the dead man wanted to strangle the boy, so the boy got angry and threw him into, back into the coffin and the six men took him away. Then an old man, a hideous shell of a man, came in and said to the boy, he must die. But the boy wanted a say in his death. He wanted a strength test to see who was stronger, him or the old man. The boy got the axe and caught the old man's beard and then beat him with an iron bar. He surrendered and showed him the gold. Then the old man disappeared and the boy went to sleep. So after all this, the king rewarded him by letting the boy marry one of his daughters, but he still did not know how to shudder. He got married and at night his wife took his clothes off while he was sleeping and tipped cold water and fish all over him in the bed. He woke up suddenly saying, wife, what is this that's making me shudder? Then he was happy because he knew how to shudder. <laughs> Isn't this the kookiest story you've ever heard? Oh my god. Seriously, whoever came up with these stories, oh my god, there's a lot of information that doesn't make sense and there's a lot of things missed out. So I find that a lot of these Brothers Grimm stories uh, don't sort of, um, they don't flow. They just, they just chop, if that makes sense. There's just bits left out and it's like, well, why did they get from this to that? And there's no explanation in between, so... <laughs> 
Oh my god, they're just the most kookiest stories and it's just it's just so funny to to read them and and then yeah, just <laughs> I, did, I hope that you guys enjoyed that and, and you know, l- listening to me read these. I'm not the best reader, but I try my best. And yeah, it, it's just it's just hilarious. It just makes me laugh. Like I read these stories and I do get a bit of a chuckle. So anyway, I'm hoping that you enjoyed this illustration. Uh, I, I did enjoy doing it. I don't mind it. My favorite part about this illustration is the dog. And it is quite gruesome. So yeah, there's there's a dog and a cat cut in half because this is the part of the story where the dog and the cats came out to try and, you know, try and get him with hot chains. So these demonic animals. So that's what I'm portraying here. And he, he killed he killed most of them and some of them, you know, ran away. So I, I struggled with the guy uh, pretty bad and I ended up changing the cat at, um, at the last minute as well which i don't fully show but anyway hopefully you enjoyed this and i am out of here and i will see you guys in the next one bye